Everybody wants to build a life that lasts. Faith that is real. Relationships that are strong. Families that are loving. A life that has purpose. A future full of hope, joy, and peace. But these things don't happen by accident. They're the result of the quality of the material we're building them with and the precision of the plan that we use to build them. You can't build this alone. So let's start building it together. Good morning. It's good to have you with us. Do you know that in heaven there's a blueprint when God created you? There's no one like you. I, I love to sit around and watch people like in a mall, and I keep looking for people that are just alike. And now there's some identical twins sometimes. They may look alike. They're still not alike. They're still not alike. And you, you have been made. God's got a plan. God's got a plan. God wants to use you. You know, no matter what's happened in your life, God wants to use you. I have a good friend that's, he's, he's just been in a, a terrible accident. He's, his, his life is not going to be the same for, for a while. And yet he, he said to me, he says, he says, you know, this is, no, this is no good, it's no fun. He says, but maybe somebody will get saved through it. I thought, I thought you know what, he's not lost track of the fact that God's going to use him. Every one of you, God wants to use. Matter of fact, he says, I want you to be my light. I want you to be my salt. As he got done preaching, he's preaching messages to these people on steps to take, just like this. We're talking about blueprints, steps to take for us to become that light. Man, you're special. Look at somebody and say, hey, I'm special. Come on, some of you aren't doing it because you're not convinced. Come on, tell them you're special. Now I'll look back at them and say, I know you are. <laughs> More of you enjoyed that than the other. So anyway, we're in this series. We started talking about Blueprint three weeks ago, and uh, we, found, we found out a couple things, and uh, this is what we're kind of driving this series with is that uh, number one is we need to be rooted. There, there needs to be a solid foundation underneath of us. We've got, we've got to be solid. Jesus talked about building our life on the rock, and the, he called those who built on a solid rock wise. And those who didn't, he called them foolish. And then we discovered, and we've been talking about that, we need to have rhythm in our life. And a few weeks ago, if you were here, you saw that I don't have rhythm physically. And so, so uh, it, that's okay. But we have to have spiritual rhythm. And that's this rhythm that we're just, that spiritually we're doing well. Not that we don't have some setbacks at times, but, but spiritually we're just doing the things we need to do to stay in rhythm to stay in relationship with God, to stay in relationship with people. And, uh, and we talked last week about how it starts with Bible engagement. Bible engagement. Not just Bible have one, no. Bible engagement. That we're engaging into the Scriptures. And Jesus said this is what our life was founded on. And we said last week, my life will only be as strong as what I build it on. And I just want you to ask yourself, what really is my life built on? What really, when I think about it, has, has been the foundation of my life? And Jesus just said, you know what? It needs to be this. And it's never too late to allow the Word of God, to allow the Bible to become what you put your feet on that brings you a solid, sturdy foundation. And we, read that we said this to last week too, the purpose was never just to read it, the purpose was to literally live it, literally live what that book says. And, and so uh, there's, a, there's a passage in, in Proverbs that says, by wisdom a house is built. And through understanding it is established. And though in knowledge its rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. And I, I just think that's a picture of you. That's a picture of all of us. That God designed us certain ways. And he has a plan. And that part of that plan is still to build. We're still all being built. None of us are there. We're still being built. And so today we just want to take it one step further in this process of the blueprint. We started with blueprint. We, then we went into the foundation. And today we want to talk about the building materials the building materials. And uh, connection is not optional, it's essential. 
So when you're, when you're constructing something, you bring, you bring in the wood, you've got the foundation poured, you've got that steadied, and now, now you're starting to bring in the wood. You're bringing in the, the materials. Now, those materials are not going to do any good just sitting there. They have to start putting them together, start connecting. Connecting is essential. There's no option. You can't just stand the two-by-fours up and hope they're going to stay there. But the walls are going to have to be built, and they're connected, and they're nailed together, and this wall is hooked to this wall, and that wall is hooked to this wall, and there's connection there. And just like that, in our life, we've got to have connections. We've got to have connections in our lives. Now, here's, here's the problem that we have. Current research shows that we're, we're in an era of time where we have more connection than ever and quicker. I mean, 10 years ago, you would never be able to take a picture of your lunch and allow millions of people to see it. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I mean, that's all we have to do. Or a selfie. I mean, it just goes all over the place. I mean, 10 years ago, you would never picked up the phone and go, you know what I had for lunch today? You you just wouldn't have done it. So you see the connection. You're very aware of the connections that we have that are so quickly. Now, the problem with that is at the same time that that we have this connectivity that we are also considered one of the loneliest, isolated people group in American history. It doesn't even make sense, does it? How can we have such quick connectivity and connect with people all around the world and yet be isolated and lonely? Well, it, it could happen. See, at the core of meaningful relationships in our lives, in the core of that, it takes time. And so because of this, this uh, connectivity that's taken away from meaningful relationships, I mean, I get concerned because, uh, you know, a, a lot of the young people, they're, they're just texting, and that's, the, that's their means of connection. And there's not the sit-downs and the talks and the, the sit-downs on the front porch that we talked about months ago. But in the midst of that, they, matter of fact, you know what they're calling it today? Relational poverty. They're saying that in the culture today, it's relational um, poverty, which means poor. Relationally, we're poor. We're poor. And, uh, and so, you know, when you, when you think about it, though, the, the, here's the problem with meaningful relationships. It's messy. Isn't it messy sometimes? I mean, friendships <laughs> can get messy. It takes a lot of time, a lot of time to build a relationship that's meaningful. It takes a lot of energy, and, uh, and it's just hard. It's hard in our modern culture that we have. Now, what's crazy is there was a study done that said 10, 20 years ago, the average person had six meaningful relationships. Today, it's two. That's been more than cut in half. Now, that, that's good that we have two, but that's, that is an average. So, if, if it's an average, there's some that have zero. And uh, they, matter of fact, they, they went on and they talked about how Barner Research said that uh, three out of five people experience loneliness. Three out of five people experience and, and I know some of you are going, no, I'm not lonely. I, I'm, not, I'm not lonely. And, but here's the thing. Loneliness doesn't mean you're lonely. See, we think, well, if I, if I live by myself and I don't go anywhere, that's lonely. Now, that's, that's, that's being alone. Now, you can be lonely in that setting, but you can be lonely in a group of people. You ever been there? I mean, you're in this group of people, and yet you're like, I, I'm, I'm way on the outside of this. I, no, no one even sees me. A lot of time that's because of low self-esteem. Been there. But, you know, how, so, so we have this idea that, no, I'm not lonely because I live with people and I work with people. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not lonely, but I want you to think, what if it was not so much about the place where you're at, but meaningful relationships, meaningful relationships, people that you really know, people that time has been invested in, face-to-face conversations, heart-to-heart conversations. 
So if you look in Ecclesiastes, they talk about, they talk about this. And, and there's, there's actually three kind of pillars that talk about loneliness when it describes a man here. It says in Ecclesiastes 4, 8 through 12, it says, There was a man all alone. He had neither son or do- nor brother. There was no end to his toil, yet his eyes were not content with his wealth. For whom am I toiling, he asked, and why am I depriving myself of enjoyment? Now, you look at this picture and you're going, well, he he is lonely in in a lone spot, and yeah, perhaps he is. Uh, There's really other people, though. But look at what he's saying, And, and I don't really know what this is exactly, but the first one is isolation. And this is where he's alone. He's all by himself, whether by choice or, or not, but he's alone, and maybe we just refer to that uh, as, as being alone, or it could be referred to as not having any meaningful relationships. And he says in here, he says, then there's no end to my toil. Now, you could think, well, he's talking about work, that he just works and works and works and works, and there's just no end to it. And it could be. That could be why he's lonely, because he works and he works and he works and he works and he works, and he's lonely because of it. He has no meaningful relationship because there's no end to his toil. That may very well be. Maybe it's just busy, busy, busy in something else. He's so busy. Maybe it's just he's isolated himself. Maybe it's insecurities. Maybe it's worry. Maybe it's fear. But we don't know what it is. But you look on, and the second part of this is another pillar is insulation, Listen, insulation happens in our loneliness. Well, what's insulation? Insulation is where we put something between us and people. You know, when you build a house, you, you build this structure and you put insulation that separates this wall from the outside wall. Insulation. And so this guy says, yet his eyes were not content with his wealth. I mean, I, I almost take it like there was something that he was putting in between him and meaningful relationships, something that he put in between there, creating space. I mean, what would it be if you didn't have, you would feel lonely? You, you would have this sense of loneliness. What, what would it be if, is there something that perhaps could be there that would make you feel lonely? I mean, sometimes when we experience loneliness, whether it's really being alone or just that feeling of loneliness, we try to medicate it. People try to do stuff. Try, so people try to put that insulation in between there. And uh, this, this gentleman finds out that, you know what, this, my wealth, whatever that looked like, is not fulfilling. And then the last one is an illusion of independence. I love that he asked himself this question, for whom am I toiling? Why am I doing all this? Why am I doing all this work or whatever it was? And he asked himself, look at this, look at this, this is so important. Why? Why am I depriving myself of enjoyment? I just look at that and I think he says, why am I depriving myself of meaningful relationships? What am I doing? I thought, what wisdom for this man to come to that point to go, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? See, don't deprive yourself of meaningful relationships because he refers to it as enjoyment. Do you know that God never created you to be lonely? God never created you to live lonely. He never created you to live life on your own. He definitely never, he never said to turn your feet, follow me, and do it all alone. Definitely not. Never has he said that. But see, the blueprint of today that we're going to talk about is you cannot grow spiritually without connecting relationally. You just can't. Every person that I know that is really moving, they've got rhythm in their life. They're moving this way. They're not stopping. They're just keep moving. They, have, they could have some few setbacks, but they're moving. You see them growing spiritually. Everyone that I know like that has meaningful relationships. They're connected with people. They're connected with people. See, growth by its, by its nature is rooted in connection. This house is built by connecting, connecting the corners, connecting the house. I mean, you think about it, a two-by-four is expensive today. A two-by-four can either, you could, you could prop a door open with it, it could have meaning, 
or you could, you know, that would definitely be useful, or you can use it for the structure of this house, that it becomes a part of the structure that's built and it's connected, and now it has purpose, and it's meaningful. You know, I, I uh, travel a, a certain way, and, and uh, there's, there's a place, that I don't know what they were building, some sort of structure. And I don't know. I don't. I don't know the situation. I don't know if they'd run out of money or just time or whatever it was. But the structure, outside structure, had sat there for quite a while, and they had two by fours that were holding the walls up. It was just the walls, and I would drive by it, and I would think. I'd always think, "Oh, I wonder what they're building," and uh, you know, wonder wonder why they're not moving on. I, I didn't know. Well, one day we had a storm. We had a pretty big storm, and I drove by there, and the walls had just fallen in. They had actually fallen out, some of them. And they were twisted. And they, they, there was two by fours that were broken from this storm. And I thought, you know, that, that's, this is what Jesus talks about when a storm comes. But, you know, what, what they hadn't gotten to was to put the, put the roof on it. I mean, there was, there was connectivity over here, but not the, the roof that brought it all together, that brought it solid, that, uh, assumingly that if they would have brought the, uh, the, the, the roof on there, it would have been more secure. Now, I, I know storms could have wiped that out too, but it was like, oh, man, they, and they were probably thinking, if we would have just gotten that roof put on, that structure pulled together, the connectivity it might still be standing out. In fact, Ecclesiastes says this, two are better than one because they have good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity on the one who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. You know, and that, that, that reminds me of, uh, you, know, you know, you're in this spot where you're, you feel like you're needed and you feel like you're wanted in that place. And, and uh, you know, remember, that, remember that show, Cheers? And they, and they sang that song, that their, their, their song that would always open up with, that, well, let's, let's just listen. I, go ahead and sing with it, okay? I'm not going to. Making your way in the world today takes everything you've got. Taking a break from all your worries sure would help a lot. Wouldn't you like to get away? Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. I have to be honest with you. I get emotional when I hear that. And the reason I get emotional is because it ticks me off. Because that should be the theme song of the church. Not a bar. Now, now, it's good that it's a bar. That's cool that everybody knows your name and a place to go. But that should be the theme song of the church. Of the church. Not just this church, but yes, this church. That should be our theme song. People should be pouring into here to go, I got to go to some place that everybody knows my name. I got to go to a place that everyone accepts me just as the way I am. That should not be, shouldn't that not be the church? Should that not be? Years ago, before we started the church, I went to this conference, and the conference was on how to have church. And the, and the, the meeting went really late one night, and, uh, and I, after the meeting, I was hungry, and I went down to Applebee's down the street. And I went there, and I, I sat just outside of the bar area, and I watched and I watched these people, whoever it was that walked up, they were friends immediately. They didn't even know each other. It didn't matter who sat down. It was like, hey, have a seat. And they were talking. And I'll tell you what, that's where the vision of this church began to happen. I thought that's what the church needs to look like. And so that's the beginning of the vision of this church, that we would be an extremely friendly church. Now, I believe that we are pretty friendly. I just heard a testimony of a lady that came last week. She shared with me of how people were treating it was really good. But you know what? It can be even better. We have gar, parker, gar parkers. I don't know what those are, but we have them. 
I think. And we have car parkers. <laughs> so those of you who drive a car, come on in. <laughs> wow. You know, we have greeters, but listen, it shouldn't stop there. The way we believe is every one of you are a greeter. Listen, a lot of you sit in the same seats week after week after week, and you don't even know all the people sitting around you. Come on, church. Come on, church, a place where everybody knows your name. Should that not be it? Connectivity, connectivity place where I can go, a place where, where there's, I, I can feel like I'm wanted. I mean, in other words, everybody needs to be needed and everybody needs to be known. Every one of us. Matter of fact, when God put us together, part of that blueprint was that. He put it in there. A need to be needed. A need to be known. That's what all of us desire deep down. Even though many times we say that we don't need that. So that leads me to the real foundation of this connectivity, and that's accountability. I know so that's, uh, that, that's kind of a scary word. Accountability. People that bring out the best in me. Some, some people get scared when they hear that. Like, oof, I, I really don't need somebody telling me all that I did wrong. I, I know what I did wrong. I, I, I really don't need somebody that's always correcting me. That's not what accountability is. That might be a little portion of it. See, accountability is used by God to make people great. That's what accountability, true accountability makes people great. And the problem with accountability is people are a lot of times waiting. I'm waiting for somebody to come up and say, hey, I want to be your accountability person. No, don't, don't wait. Matter of fact, Ephesians 5.21 says, submit to one another out of reverence to God. Now, whew, that word submit's big, isn't it? But submit to one another. I mean, what it's saying is put yourself out there to somebody else out of reverence to God. Because I believe when we have accountability and connectivity in our life that we'll become the people that God intended us to be. Wouldn't it be amazing if the whole church, if everybody was flowing in their gifts of what God had for them? and using what God made them to be. And so, you know, th- th- there, there's, there's two parts of accountability. In Romans, it talks about uh, helping others, helping one another do what is right and building them up in the Lord. So there's this building up. Come on. Come on. Let's, come on. You can do this. Come on. They're, they're cheering you on. And, and in, other, uh, in Galatians, it talks about helping that person uh, that has fallen away to get back on track. And so, so there's that encouragement either way that it's, it's good stuff or there's those times where some hard things need to be said. But it's to get them back on the path, like, come on, come on, let's get back on the path. Let's get back where you are. Let's get back doing the things that you used to do. Let's get, let's get back there. Come on, come on, let's, let's do this. See, spiritual friends... Help us, help us, help each other to, to show, so, the, the big to it. <laughs> Did you understand that? I don't either. <laughs> I need to slow down a little bit. You know what? <laughs> Accountability is when we help each other see what God's doing. See, so, hey, look at what God's doing here. Hey, so look at how God's using you. Man, wasn't that cool? Or when they, when they say to me, hey, Byron, I feel like God wants me to do this. I'm like, come on, do it. Step out. Step out in faith. I want to see what God will do in your life. That's a part of that accountability. Accountability is when they, when they encourage you to stay on the vine. Jesus said you got to stay on the vine. If you get off of the vine, he says you're going to die. Accountability is to, to cheer one another on to stay encouraged in Christ and connected to him. There's several Proverbs that talk about, uh, you know, having these type of people. It says, uh, Proverbs 12, uh, 15 says, fools think they need no advice, but the wise listen to others. Proverbs 27, 6 says, faithful are the wounds of a friend. Whoa. But the kisses of the enemy are deceitful. Proverbs 27, 17 says, iron sharpens iron. So people sharpen others. Iron sharpens iron. There's a, another scripture. It won't be on the screen. In Hebrews 3. Listen to what this says. It says, see to it. You guys remember when mom said, see to it? 
Your room gets clean. You guys remember? Did your mom tell you that? One saying yes, the other's not. They're not talking. I'm not. I'm not admitting to that. But see to it. Listen to what. The, listen to what he's saying. See to it that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turned away from the living God. See to it that that doesn't happen to you. And then he gives the answer. Listen to the answer. This is the way to see to it. He says, but encourage one another daily as long as it's called today so that no one is hardened and and deceitful by their heart by sin. See to it that you don't harden your heart. And how do you do it? Have people in your life that are going to cheer you on. Come on, get back on the path. That's how you do it. You have people in your life that will hold you accountable. Accountability is to invite somebody into your life. Invite some people in your life to challenge you. Giving permission for somebody to sharpen me. People that can see you at your worst and still believe God's at his best in you. People who will, they, they, they'll say what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. Who, who are those people like, you know, you go to the bowling alley and they have the bumpers? You know, they, they have the bumpers that you use and the ball goes boom, 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 boom. You know, it keeps it back on the path. Who are your bumpers? You know, there's a time where we get to take the bumpers off because, because we're rooted and we have rhythm and those people are still, the gutters are still there to keep us in line. I mean, who's your bumpers? Who's those people that are pushing you back on track? Come on. Who are those people? You know, who's going to sharpen you? Do you ever see when somebody sharpens an ax? I mean, the sparks fly. Listen, there should be times in your life where somebody comes to you and the sparks fly. I, I remember one time for me, there's a, there's a gentleman that I, I gave permission to sharpen me. I gave permission to hold me accountable. I gave him permission to say what I needed to hear, not what I wanted to hear. And I'm sitting with him one day. I'll never forget this. And I was having a problem with having hard conversations with people. I avoided them. I hated them, like most of you do. I avoided them. I never wanted to have them. And he looked at me one day, and he said this. (laughs) He said, Byron, you're a secret liar. The sparks flew. I'm like, I mean, I was like, just a minute, I have to breathe. Don't say anymore. (laughs) I can't take anymore right yet. I mean, it was like grind grind. It hurt when he said that until I began to see what he was talking about. And I'll tell you what, that was one of the wisest things I've ever heard. That was one of the things that has changed my life like nothing else. When he spoke life into me by saying, hey, Byron, I know this isn't going to be easy. I'm going to put you on the grinding wheel for a moment. But you know what? This guy loves me. I asked him to do this and he loves me and he does it in a loving way. And so we want you to have those people. Matter of fact, we, we try to provide opportunity for you. You heard Sean talk about them. We try to provide. We don't, we don't just do programs to have programs. There's a reason behind what we do. And, and so we've got, we've got Fight Club coming up. September 10th is the kickoff, guys. Fight Club. It's one of our methods to get you in a group, in a smaller group of guys that perhaps you'll find an accountability partner. I mean, we, we do that as part of it. I, I know some of the guys that have been in Fight Club, their accountability is the same one they had years ago. These guys still meet. They still hold one another accountable. So, so we, have, we have Fight Club coming up. We have Treasured. Same thing with Treasured. It's, it's women getting together in a smaller group, and perhaps you're going to find your accountability person there. If not, there's going to be an extent of accountability that you're going to have in that group, the same with Fight Club. Now some of you are going to go, I, I, I don't want to do either of those. Well, that's okay because we have another opportunity. It's called what we call discussion groups. Discussion groups are really easy. After every sermon, we provide questions for you to get with some people to discuss what you just heard. Discussion groups. And listen, you, you, could do, you could do this with two people, you, you, just the ones at home. You could grab those, those questions and talk about it. 
and build this spiritual momentum and rhythm in your life and holding one another accountable. Or maybe you, I just talked to a couple out here and they, they were like, oh, we're probably not going to do this. I said, how about, how about if you do a discussion group? They're like, oh, what, what? I said, you know, we, I've been meeting with different groups of, of people ages, age-wise, and the first one was, was 20s to 30s. And then, and then I did 30s to 40s, and the number one request was this, have groups my age. Now, we're going to work on that, but listen, I'll just be honest with you. I looked and I go, well, have some people over. Huh? <laughs> They're like, wow, that's a good idea. I don't, I don't want to make them sound dumb or anything, but you know what? That's, you have to just say, I need this. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find, I mean, I brought, one of the reasons I bring them up here in front, I said, look across, there's people your age you've never even seen here, have you? You don't even know who they are. That's why I did that, because I want you to see them and go, hey, let's, let's do discussion group. Let's get together. And perhaps, perhaps you're going to build this relationship, and there may be those who come out and they're, they're holding you accountable. All of them may hold you accountable in some degree. We have all kinds of stuff. We, we've got Celebrate Recovery on Friday nights. Hurts, habits, and hang-ups. That doesn't just mean drugs and alcohol. Hurts, habits, and hang-ups. You know, bottom line, what it is? It's a group of people that are holding one another accountable, that are loving on one another, that are encouraging, come on, come on, get back up, come on. You know, there's, there's all kinds of things. That's why we do the Bible app. But anyway, we want to provide these. See, the, the belonging is important. People that know and, they know and love the real me. You need people like that. And you may have to be the one to go, hey, let's do a discussion group. You may have to do it online. You may do it in person. Either way, I'm going to do this. What are you doing? What are you doing to cause you to keep going, to get that rhythm in life, to have a group of people around you that are going, it's all right, come on, come on, let's keep, let's keep in rhythm. First Peter 4, 8 says, above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sin. I mean, belonging means to be accepted and connected and comfortable, sometimes uncomfortable, but not perfect. And it's all okay. You know, I want you to be careful, though, because what I'm talking about, you never want to open yourself up to a lot of people about all the details. You need a group of people that are accountable, but you need a few, one or two, that really know you. Matter of fact, one of the strangest scriptures that I think is, it says this, do not cast your pearls before the swine. I remember when I first read it, I'm like, what? What does that mean? Well, it's really simple, that if you had pearls, you're never going to cast them out into the, to the hog pen. Whatever's precious to you, don't throw it just to anybody because they'll trample it. Be careful who becomes that really close account- accountability person, that person that, that really cares about you. We need that, but you have to be selective. That's why I say get in a group. You may find that person. Maybe if it's not this fight club, it's the next chapter. Maybe it's the next one. Maybe all of a sudden in Treasured, you find that person. In the discussion group, you find that person that you connect with and you began to open up. You know, remember what I said? It takes time and it's messy. But do you have that person? Listen, I started off saying this is not optional. It's not optional. This is the way God has wired us. We need each other in life. I mean, do you, have, do you have somebody that will carry you to Jesus? Remember, remember the story of the, the four guys that carried their friend? He was paralyzed. They thought, he, just, he needs to get to Jesus. He needs a healing. He needs to get to Jesus. And they carry him on, on this cot, and they get to the house, and they can't even get to the door. And they just turned around and went home. No, they didn't. Those four thought, oh, we got to get him to Jesus. We're not going to give up. And I don't know which one of the four, but I think it was Pastor Rick. He said, <laughs> he said, let's tear the roof off with that face. Some of you know, let's tear the roof off. And that's what they did. You know, matter of fact, I did a whole sermon on, like, on that, that topic one time, and I called them 
roof rippers. Do you have any roof rippers in your life? Do you have that person that's going to come and they're going to pick you up and they say, I'm going to get you to Jesus. I don't care what it takes. I don't care if you're kicking and screaming. I'm going to get you to Jesus. Do you have that person, those people in your life? And listen, remember what I said? You've got to open yourself to them. You've got to get to that point where somebody cares for you and they'll check up on you. They come around you. You know, sometimes it's hard because we don't know what to say to people, do we? Sometimes we hold back from going and being with those people because we don't know what they say. It's happened to me. It's happened to me in some of my dark times where I thought, where, oh, there's nobody here. Gail was just talking to a lady the other day, and the hardest thing she's ever done in her life, the darkest time of her life, she said, not one of my friends showed up. Not one. And she said, it, it's affected my friendship with them now. But you know, you know, why, you know why we don't show up? Because we don't know what to say. It's not that we don't care. You've been there. You don't know what to say, so you're like, I don't, I, I don't have the answers. I'm not going. You know the story of Job. Job lost everything. You know what it says about his friends? It said his friends came and they sat with him and never said a word. Never said a word. I mean, what are you going to say to Job who lost everything? He's got boils all over his body. It's, so good. it's going to be good, Job. Hang in there. I mean, that's not, that's not going to be what he wants to hear at that moment. So they sat and they said nothing. Are you willing to go to some people and sit and say nothing? You know what it says? I care. I care. It matters. It matters. This is the way God has put us together. It's the way he's built us. It's the blueprint. This is all in there. If you read your blueprint, you're going to see this. You're going to see your need for people. You're going to see your need for accountability. You're going to see your need to help somebody else. It's all in there. It's all in there. There's one thing that stops us from accountability, though. One thing. How many, how many want to know what it is? All right, I got one. That's good. I was going to tell you anyway. I don't blame you for not raising your hand, though, because it's not easy. One thing will keep you from accountability. One thing will keep you from opening yourself up. Remember, being choosy. One, one, one thing will keep you from getting yourself in a group of these people to, to push you. It's pride. That's the thing. It's pride. It's pride. You know, I, I've watched people help all kinds of people, and then they needed help, and they're like, no, nah, I don't need it. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. You know what it is? It's pride. Pride keeps us from being and doing part of what God has instilled in us. Don't do it. Don't do it. If it's not fight club or treasured or discussion groups, that's all good. But let it be something. Let it be something. Do you have yourself in a place? Find that place. I don't know what it is. I don't know where it is. We make some opportunities for you. But if you don't have it, find it. Find it. Because it's the way God has wired us. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you for everyone in this room. And Father, I pray, Father, there's, there's people in every, all kinds of stages in here. Father, there's those who are doing really, really good spiritually. They've got accountability. They've got rhythm, Bible engagement. Father, thank you. Father, there's those who are just all way on the other end. They're struggling. They're, they're just struggling along. Life has caused them to go sideways. Life's difficult. Life's unfair. Father, so we're, we're all over the place. But Father, there's one answer for all of us. 
one answer for all of us. That number one, that we're accountable to you. Above all things. That, Father, most of all, we will go eyeball to eyeball with you one day and give an account for our lives. Father, as we're on this earth, you've, in, you've instructed us, you've wired us to be accountable to one another, to love one another. They'll know you by how you love one another. Father, whether it's deeply close relationships, one that causes sparks to fly, or Father, whether it's just that group of people that's cheering us on. Father, may pride be put off to the side today to make this happen. With every head bow, please. You know, as I pray that the first thing it's got to start with is between you and Jesus. A relationship with you and Jesus right there. Start right there. So if, if you find yourself going, that, you know, that's where I need to start. I, I, my foundation's not even good. Uh, my foundation's crumbled. I, I just, I need a new start. I need to build that foundation. I need to start with a relationship with Jesus, and then I'll get to people. But if that's you today, I want to pray for you. We want to help you in that journey. We want to see how we can help you. Get that foundation under your feet, and then we'll go from there. If that's you, with no one looking around, please. If that's you, would you just slip up your hand and say, Pastor, will you, will you pray for me? Will you, will you pray for me today? That I, I would begin that direction. I'd begin to turn my feet and follow Jesus today. Is there anyone else? Well, Father, we thank you for your love for us. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen.